educate about uh, different types of identification programs and things that we need to do. Now we're ready to actually apply these practices to this calf that we have in the chute. And you'll notice that we've got a halter on her. We've got her tied around, not uncomfortably, but enough to restrict her movement somewhat. And I know this takes a little bit of time, but we're doing some things that need some preciseness to them. And this animal moving unrestricted makes it difficult sometimes to get a good tattoo, to get that tag in without splitting the ear. All of these things that we're doing, it just helps us to have this animal restrained. And even though it may take an extra 30 seconds or so per animal to restrain them like this, even if we're working 50 calves, we're talking about a very few minutes to do an, a good job as opposed to just a job. So take the extra time to ensure your safety and ensure the safety of the animal. We've got everything that we need laid out here. We got ready before we started. And we talked about this EID tag out front and this long number that's on it. Once we've got that in the calf, that's really hard to read. So our records, as you can see here, we've already got that tag number recorded next to her identification number here on the farm. So her tattoo is gonna be 1272, her tag's gonna be 1272, and her 840 ID tag will go in her permanent record with our herd. First thing we gotta to do to get ready is make sure we get these ears clean. I cannot stress enough, this tattoo needs to be legible, not just two or three green dots. And then they scrub the inside of this ear because a clean surface is critical. As you can see, we've got the inside of that ear nice and clean, got all the wax and dirt out of it. As you can see down here where I did not clean, it's a little more dirty. But a clean, somewhat sterile surface is what we're after. Now we're ready to apply some tattoo ink. Now, lots of times I don't wear a glove. But if you don't want to wear green on your finger for a week, good idea to have a glove. And we're going to put just a pea-sized drop on our finger. We're going to go in and remember we said we wanted that tattoo right here. So we're going to spread some green ink. Now, whenever we're working several calves, we have a tendency to make a green mark right on top of their head. So that as we're sorting out which ones we've done, it's very evident to us which ones we have worked on. Now we're ready for the tattoo. We've got our numbers reading from right to left. And we've also put some alcohol on it. But again, there's no such thing as alcohol toxicosis whenever you're disinfecting for a tattoo. So we're gonna put a little bit more on there. And then we're gonna come up and right in the middle of our ink, we're going to put this tattoo, making sure we got positioned correctly, and we're gonna squeeze. Now, of course, that pricks the ear, so it's normal that that calf would move a little bit. But if you look closely, you can see the little holes where that 1272 is at. What we're doing now is taking our alcohol, putting some on our finger, Going back in here and rubbing until that surface gets smooth, which means that we have put that ink into each one of those holes. And every one of those holes will show up as a green dot with a legible tattoo. This step is critical to get a tattoo that you can read. So make sure that you get a good job, get it worked in there really good. Now our tattoo is complete. So I'm gonna take my glove off now because I can work without getting green ink on everything. We're ready now to put in a regular ID tag. And again, it's kind of important that we put this tag in so that it hangs in this manner as opposed to hanging in this manner. Makes it a lot easier to tell who's coming and who's going. So we'll take this. And remember, I said that we're gonna put it in this area right here, about halfway back. And this guy's gonna jump. And now she has her tag 
in her ear. Now this calf is permanently identified as number 1272 in our herd for the rest of her life. Whether this tag becomes unreadable or she loses it, we still have a way of going in here and finding out what her number is so that we can replace that tag. Now we're ready to do our EID tag and it's just my preference to put that EID tag in the right ear. Now I put the tag in the left ear for a reason. When you're cat food vaccinating for bangs or brucellosis, the state vet requires that that tattoo for that vaccination be in this right ear. And it's right in the middle of the ear. So we put the tag in the left so that we don't destroy that cat food vaccination tattoo so that it's still readable and that's important to us. Now you notice this calf has a, a warp right on the edge of her ear and that's pretty common. That happens with just about any animal. We're going to remove that warp after we're done. But we're ready now to put in our EID tag and you'll notice that I'm going to put the big part of the tag on the inside of the ear. And that's because it's heavy, it's bulky, and if it's sitting up here on top of the ear, it's more likely to get caught on a hay string or a tree limb or anything else and tear this tag out. Invariably, you'll lose some of these tags over the life of that cow. If it does, you just mark this tag, or this particular number that you have a record of as a dead tag and put a new tag in and assign that number back to this calf here. So we're gonna go in on top of the ear, just as such. Again, the big part of the tag inside the ear, and we're going to press the handle very quickly, and this calf's not gonna like this. Now, that tag is on the inside of the ear. And you can see it's very difficult to read that number. And there's no way you can read it out in the field. So it's critical that you've got a record of that that's tied back to this identification here. Now we've only shown you a tattoo in one ear. We're going to put that very same 1272 tattoo over here in this ear. So this completes, once we put this other tattoo in, this completes her permanent and temporary identification. Even though she may be known as Lucy here on the farm, she's known officially in the American Angus Association as number 1272. What we'll do, uh, we'll very quickly show you how to remove this wart. And you can do this with a pair of pliers. Lots of times you can just do it with your fingers. But just grasp that wart and just do it jerk, just like that. And that wart will come right off. Warts are not something to be terribly concerned about. Even with time, if you don't pull that wart, it will fall off anyway. But it's very easy to remove them as well. We thank you for stopping by the tailgate. We hope you've learned something in this video. And come back and see us again as we have more episodes of Tailgate University. Mm -hmm.